So in this video we're doing projects 77 through 88. And yeah, we're starting with project 77 here, which is the Space War Flicker LED. And that's what our circuit looks like. And the objective here is to flash the LED using our Space War IC. Now, this circuit looks familiar. It should. It's set up exactly like Project 60, which was the Space War Flicker motor. And this is the Space War Flicker LED. So our alarm IC is driving the input to our Space War IC turning it on and off, and we get that flickering effect from our LED. So when I turn the circuit on, you see our LED light up, and it flickers and flashes, but it flashes at different rates and at different times and stuff like that, as the Space War IC is being turned on and off by the alarm IC cycling through the Space War's different sound effects. And we see that visually on the LED, as opposed to the motor, where we were kind of both hearing it and seeing it a little bit. So, that is how project number 77 works. So let's move on to project 78. So here we are with project number 78, and it's our music AND gate. And there's what our circuit looks like. And the objective here is to build an AND gate. Now, actually, we did build an AND gate in a previous project. It was all the way back in project number 48. But that was just dealing with an LED. This time we're doing it with the music IC. So, we've got our music IC, which drives our speaker where we hear it. And then we got our push button, and we got our slide switch connected in series to each other to the input of the music IC. So, with an AND gate, it means both conditions have to be true, or ON in this case. So if I push the slide, the uh, push button, nothing happens. If I turn on the slide switch, still nothing happens. But if I had the slide switch on and the push button on, we hear the music I see start up and hear it out of the speaker. But, again, with an AND gate, both of these conditions have to be true, or in this case, both switches have to be on in order for the music I see to get any power and for us to hear it throughout the speaker. So, that's how project number 78 works. So let's move on to project 79. So here we are with project number 79, and it is the flash and tone. And there's where a circuit looks like. And the objective here is to build a circuit that flashes lights and plays sounds. And actually the circuit is set up similar to Project 38, which is the periodic sounds one. In which case the alarm I see was driving our music I see and flashing our light periodically, but we had the speaker connected. This one here has the whistle chip connected. But we also have a red LED, which flashes based on the output of the music I see. So when I turn on the slide switch, we kind of get that odd sound effect combination from the alarm I see and music I see together through the whistle chip. And then our red LED is flashing with the output of the music I see. And then we've got a lamp that's flashing at a constant periodic rate to our alarm I see. So that is how project number 79 works. So let's move on to project 80. So here we are with project number 80. It is the lamp, speaker, and fan in parallel. And there's what our circuit looks like. And the objective is to show the power drop of components when they're all connected in parallel. Now again, as it is, we've got our speaker connected in parallel with our fan and lamp. Fan and lamp are controlled by our slide switch. The speaker is turned on and off via our press switch. Now, when I turn on the circuit, the fan and lamp come on. Of course, we got a little bit of noise from our fan there. But if I press the press switch, see, you hear the fan speed go down and the lamp brightness goes down too. If I release the speaker's connection, it speeds back up and the brightness comes back. Press it down again, it all goes back down. And that's because when you've got cir circuits in parallel, you know, items in parallel, they draw more power from the source 
unlike in series. And so because of that, the, there's more of a drop overall on the battery side. And so that's why you notice that drop when more components are put on the circuit. And you take them off, it goes back up. So that's how project number 80 works. So let's move on to project number 81. So here we are with project number 81. And it is the pencil alarm. This is what our circuit looks like. And the objective here is to draw an alarm activator. And basically what it is, I can't really show this circuit because I've tried it a few times and I can't get it to work the way it's supposed to. But what it is in the guide here, you take a pencil and you fill in this box here with a lot of uh, pencil lead. So you kind of just keep drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing. And I was doing it on paper and stuff like that, trying to get it to work, and I just couldn't get it to pass any current through the uh, the graphite marking. Now, in another video, I have shown that graphite is, in fact, electrically conductive. I've burned away a pencil with it. So, again, when these things connect to the graphite, it's supposed to make a sound like that, and the sound will vary because of the uh, resistance of the uh, graphite and how you draw it on paper. But that's how Project 81 is supposed to work, if you can get that to work right. So let's move on to Project 82. So here I have Project 82, and it's essentially the same thing with 81, but it's pencil alarm variants. And the objective here is we're going to change the different sound effects depending on where our connection is. So we moved our black jumper wire over to this first input on our alarm IC and when it makes a connection you know, it helps if it's turned on first and these two come together See, we get that sound effect out of the alarm IC Now, the next one, we put a two snap Across the first and second inputs and then we can put our snap wire across any of those two points and then when it makes contact on the graphite we get that siren effect again and now what we gotta do is take that snap wire back off because there's different uh, connection points here here is the to be connected between X and Z. Ah, so I'm going to need a spacer. Just step wire back to that. And then when we connect the two snap wires together, it's on first. Yeah, that definitely won't work because that's a short circuit there. It's got. I can't be right. Goes over here. So then when we touch them together, and now we get that other side ambulance side sound effect. So that's how Project Ever 82 works. It's just simply changing the sound effects around. So let's move on to Project Number 83. So here we are with Project Number 83, and it's fun with the alarm IC and there's what our circuit looks like and the objective is to show some different ways of getting sound out of the alarm IC now there's a lot of components on this particular circuit we got the music IC which is then driving our alarm IC which we hear out from the speaker all three of the alarm IC's inputs are being used there's a push switch, there's a constant and then we've got a photoresistor on the third one 
And then we've got a whistle chip on the trigger portion of our music IC to restart that when it ends. Then we've got our two and a half volt lamp and motor here and it's connected to a jump lead over here when we want it. And then we've got a 100 ohm resistor and a red LED with another jump lead which also comes over here. But at the beginning we just leave them off. So I'm going to need to use a, a high light to get on the photoresistor here, but when I turn on the circuit, it should sound like a machine gun coming out of the speaker. You may hear a little bit of the music I see coming out. And then when there is no light on there and the photoresistor is covered up, you should get something kind of like a siren now. And then also supposedly Pressing the button here is supposed to give you an ambulance sound, but it seems to be kind of off key on that right now. But anyway, what we do is then we take our jumper leads and we hook them up, and of course it automatically starts the audio back up. Of course, the LED lights and our motor turns on and the light comes on. And the thing is, it's not really going to be apparent here on the adapter. But if you were using a battery pack, the motor draws a lot of power when it starts up. And so it may drop the voltage low enough to affect the audio output from the music I see and alarm I see. But again, that's if you're on batteries. It may, it's not so apparent here on the AC adapter. Anyway. That is how project number 83 works, so let's move on to project 84. So here's project number 84, and it's the motor sounds combo. So the circuit looks like. And our objective here is to show how connecting multiple devices together. Now what we've got here is our music IC is on the bottom, and we've got our alarm IC right on the top. And both our outputs are being fed simultaneously to both our 2.5 volt lamp and our speaker. And the music IC has got the hold function on, so it's going to repeat while the alarm IC continues activating. And then we have a push button, which operates our motor. Now, when we turn the circuit on, our light lights up, and then we get our sound, and we're getting both the music and the siren sound effect kind of together there from the music and alarm ICs. Now if I power on the motor, see the motor is taking power away from the ICs, so they're not getting so much power, so they kind of flicker and stuff like that and not stay on very well. In fact, if I can get the motor to stall here, See, the sound is distorted coming out of the ICs now because of the amount of current I'm drawing stalling the motor. But then if the motor spins up, and then of course you get this audio business, if and I release that, then the ICs work normally. So that is how project number 84 works. So let's move on to project 85. So here we are with project number 85, and it's motor sounds combo 2. And there's what a circuit looks like. And of course we're showing the connection of multiple devices again. And just like Project 84, it looks about the same, but this time we took the 2.5 volt lamp out and put a 100 ohm resistor onto our speaker, so there's less current going to it. So when we turn the switch on, again the volume coming out of the speaker is less because of our resistor. And if I activate the fan, yeah, it may be hard to tell, but it does mess up the audio coming out of the ICs again. Well, we can't visually see it without the lamp this time. Now, this project works better off of a battery pack because it can show the difference in voltage better than the AC adapter here to kind of show the, the effects of what happens on the drain of a circuit like that. But anyway, that's how project number 85 works, so let's move on to project 86. So here we are with project number 86, and it is the music alarm combo. Here's what our circuit looks like. And the objective here is to combine sounds from the music and alarm integrated ICs. Now on the circuit, of course, you've got the music and alarm ICs 
Our power for the music I see is coming through our motor, but the motor is just acting like a conductor. It's not actually doing anything there. Then we get it on the hold function of our photoresistor, so that will turn our music I see on and off. Then we got a push button and a constant for our 1 and 2 inputs on the alarm I see. And then our speaker and our 2.5 volt lamp here on the outputs. And the output of the lamp actually comes from the music I see. Our audio is mostly going to come from both the alarm I see and the music I see. So, let's turn a second on. So you can hear the alarm I see and music I see audio. Let's see, when I cover this up, you see the light is very dim and not bright at all, but we're still getting the alarm I see audio. And of course I can press the button and it would normally change things, but this alarm I see here may be going bad at me or something, I'm not sure. Of course if I let that off, the music I see starts back up. So that's basically how project number 86 works. So let's move on to project 87. And here we are with project number 87. And it's the bomb squad, it's bomb sound. And there's what our circuit looks like. And the objective here is to build a circuit that makes a sound like a bomb. So anyway, the space where I see is hooked up. We get our two inputs down here. A connection here, we've got our speaker and LED hooked up on the output side. And then if I turn the circuit on, you hear that bomb drop sound effect from the speaker. And if you look at the LED, the LED is solid when the bomb sound is falling, and then when it explodes, it flashes. And of course, the space for IC will repeat that sound the whole time. That's how Project 87 works. So now let's move on to the last project, Project 88. Okay, we're here with project number 88. And it's bomb sound 2. And the objective is to build again a circuit sound like bomb. But this time, we take our slide switch out and we replace it with the motor. Now the motor would usually be on here already, but because of the size of it, I kind of have to hold it in place because of our AC adapter brick here. So when I put the motor on there and connect it, See, the motor turns some, but now it's supposed to make it sound like a lot of bombs are being dropped versus before with the slide switch on where it just sounded like a single one. And that's because the motor being connected in series here is affecting the voltage going to the alarm I see. And you can tell that because the LED here is barely lit up, but it's still reacting with the audio output. And you can still hear it through the speaker, although the audio is affected too. So that's how Project 88 works, and that ends this video.